Hey everyone, uh, I'm just going to do a quick video uh, on some s soldering of solar cells. Um, so, I'm relatively new at this, but it um, took a lot of trial and error and a lot of cells that are <laughs> that I, I managed to break uh, as a result of, you know, trying to get them soldered and uh, wired in series and so forth. Um, so yeah, here's some I've done. I've gotten pretty good to doing them. These are nice uh, six by six monocrystallite, I believe, uh, grade A cells. So they're top notch cells. And I'm gonna show you how I managed to solder them. Now, a few important things I wanna make a note of. And uh, I read a lot online, and I mean, I, I couldn't, there's so many people that have different ways of doing this, so many people that have wrong ways of doing it, but this is what I feel is the best way to uh, get these things soldered together. So first thing you're gonna need is a Rosen Flux pen. And very important, lead free solder. Now this doesn't say on here, but it is um, silver solder. Or yeah, I guess you could say it's it's gotta be, it doesn't say on this, but if you look at the part number, CAT CTNO4900. But important thing, this is not regular solder. Uh, this is silver solder, it's different. Uh, and you must have this type of solder in order to solder it properly. Now, my first panel which I built, which I'll show you in a little bit, I did not use the, the correct solder and it was a lot more difficult to solder with. And also it had flux in it, which you don't need because your flux is here. You just This is just pure, lead free silver solder there's no flux inside of it and it's a little bit more expensive than regular solder just because it's silver or silver's in it I guess I'm not sure how to describe it uh, next thing is your tabbing wire standard two two millimeter tabbing wire now I've seen this somebody else do this but basically what I did I wrapped some tabbing wire around this piece of cardboard and then I made it the length of two of the cells so because I will be series, series the cells. So, as you can tell, I can fit two cells pretty much on this board. And basically, it comes up to that length. So, basically, I can series uh, the cells, as I mentioned. All right. Um, you want a flat surface to do this on. So, I have little pieces of uh, not really sheet metal, it's a little about a millimeter thick of steel. That's flat, and I just use it as my surface to solder on. You can even do it on glass, something that's really flat, basically. So I find these have worked fine for me. Um, so yeah, so I'll begin. So the first thing you want to do, let's see if I can get this to work. All right, just bear with me a second. Hopefully that. No, it did what it did. Okay. Alright, so you start off with tabbing wire there. And I'm just going to strain the ends out a bit because I cut them so they're a little curved. And I get my flex pen. Now, you want to try to put as little solder as possible across the tab lines, which you see right there. So try to get a nice thin bead. You know, you don't want to. You don't want to kind of overload it with flux. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. And trust me, I have a lot of cells that I've put in a lot more flux than I should have. But to make it a nice, neat solder job, I mean, if you do a nice line down there, it'll be a lot better because it won't. The flux won't spread amongst the cell uh, over the tab area too much. And I'll show you what I mean. I guess afterwards, maybe. So you just write it down. So now you lay your tabbing wire down the middle. Now what I find when I do this is it's best to, to solder in the middle 
first and slowly spread it towards the ends. So I will show you exactly what I mean. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my solder which just happens to be right in front of the camera. So just a little dab, nothing big. And holding the tabbing wire with two of my fingers, just give it about an inch spread right down the center of the cell or the center of the uh, tab wire just to tack it down kind of. So about an inch. Now I have a Weller WES51. Temperature I'm using, I believe if I'm not mistaken, is 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, no, I read a lot about it. Again, I've read that you're supposed to use 450 degrees at the most. I've read 300 degrees, but I mean, if I don't turn this thing past 60, or or sorry, not 60, if I don't turn it past 600 Fahrenheit, I barely get the could move my my gun across the board. So, I mean, I I've been using about 700 Fahrenheit. Maybe I can go a little lower, but I find that it's just the perfect temperature that it gets hot enough and you know, after I run about an inch or two, the gun actually doesn't have enough power. You gotta let it pull it off a bit and let it heat up again and go again. So that's what I found. So 700 Fahrenheit is what I'm using. May not be the correct temperature, but I've done about 25 cells and it's been working for me fine. Another thing I want to mention as well, which I had a problem with, was when you solder the cell, um, it's gonna it's gonna bend. It usually bends kind of in a a U shape, uh, so you don't want to hold it down firmly right to the the piece of metal or to your flat surface. You more just like want to go with the cell. So as you start to solder, you're gonna notice it's gonna start to uh, get a little bit of a, a warp in the cell, and it's normal. I mean, it's very difficult to uh, keep the cell from bending. I mean, what I just recommend is do not put any weights on the cell. Just let it bend a little bit. Let it do its thing. You know, just try to be careful not to put pressure on it after it's a little bit warped. I mean, it's not going to do any harm on, the, on, on when you make your solar panel. Um, you know, as long as it sits in place, you know, reasonably. I mean, these things are only going to bend so much before they break, but they will bend a little bit. So that's okay, basically. So I'm just going to show you what I do here. So I'm just going to do about one inch uh, pieces of solder on the tab. One and a half inch, roughly. 700 degrees Fahrenheit still. Now near the end of the tab, I find that the ends are very fragile. So especially with the gun being at 700 degrees Fahrenheit. So what I try to do is I try to keep majority of the heat in the center of the cell and as you push the end, because I remember as I said the heat wears off in the tip so once you have it down for a little bit you notice that after a couple seconds you're going to notice that the heat from the gun kind of wears off and that's where you want to be at the end of the tab so that you don't put too much heat on the end of the tab kind of thing you don't want to go full heat and just hit the end of the tab because it'll it'll crack on you probably so that that's again what I found from personal experience so so there you go so that's one side So again, I'm going to start from the middle again and work my way out. I'm trying to keep the tab center with one of my fingers. And that's it. Now, I mean, I'm not perfect at soldering. I mean, I've done a, a, very, a fairly good job. I'm happy with it. You don't want to put too much heat in the cell, just enough that the tab is tacked on there well. I mean, these things only, <laughs> to my knowledge, they're supposed to be putting out about 8 amps. Uh, now, I did build one panel, which, again, I'll show in a little bit. It's my first panel. I just built it earlier this week, and I broke a lot of cells. I mean, a lot, because I did not know how to properly solder these things. And it's very frustrating, because these things are kind of expensive. They're about $4 a piece is what I paid maybe just shy of $4 a piece and I probably burned about $100 cells, $100 worth of cells by 